Hello everybody, welcome to It's All Black and White TV and this is the Newcastinated versus Tottenham match preview. Now this is a pre-record because we were going to go live at Wednesday evening at 8pm but StreamYard is having an issue with YouTube Live so there was no YouTube Live so we haven't to put this out as a pre-record so apologies for that um, but it's beyond my control. Uh, I'd like to welcome Harry from uh, Scarf East uh, Spurs Talk. How are you, Harry? All right, mate? I'm very good, thank you, Tony. It's been a while, but very nice to see you again and be talking to Tottenham and Newcastle. Uh, so really looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Well, anyway, <clears throat> before we get into the show, if you do like what you see, please do follow Sean the Sheep and smash those likes, please. So do what Sean the Sheep's doing. Hit those thumbs up. That'd be fantastic. <clears throat> And if you're brand new to the channel, come and smash the subscribe. Come be part of this great community we got here on the way to 1200. Also hit that bell notification to tell you when I'm live, have a pre-record or any upcoming shows as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, look, there's a few things going on in the news at the moment. We're seeing that uh, point deductions are here to stay by the looks of things. Um, you know, this luxury taxing isn't going to happen now. Everything's been deducted two points and they're going to appeal that. Nottingham Forest are appealing their four-point deduction, even though they've got the four points back because they're out the relegation zone. Um, and I don't, and I think that's a bit unfair on Luton Town if they stay up by say a couple of points and then Everton win that points deduction a week after the season ends, uh, and Luton go down. That's wrong, in my opinion. Um, and also, not only are our men's team trying to chase a European place, but also our women's team. Are chasing promotion to the championship and are just one way one win away. So on Sunday they entertain Huddersfield Town. And if we win that game on Sunday, the women's team are promoted to the championship. And that's I think that's at Kingston mm. Park. I don't think they're doing it in James's Park. And um, so it's at Kingston Park. So get yourselves along there Sunday, cheer the women on, and let's get that promotion wrapped up. Um, because that's all they need. One win. One win, and that is it. Um, so, yes, yeah, so we're going to look ahead to uh, Saturday's game. And, uh, I mean, Harry, look, you're back in the Champions League spots now. Um, <clears throat> I mean, look, Postacoglu come from, obviously, Celtic. Normally, man just come from, from Scotland, come into England, don't generally do very well, apart from, let's say, Sir Alex Ferguson, of course. Mm. Um, but normally there's a trend that don't normally come back they don't come down to England and do well. Um, but look, he seems to have done well with Spurs this season. He seems to have got his play in a different way. Um, sum up your season under Postacoglu and what your thoughts are of him as a manager. Very, very good. I think that, you know, when he came into the job, I mean, I was on your channel, wasn't I, earlier the season, but also yeah. last season we were talking about, you know, this season it was, it, you know, Harry Kane, the prospect of him leaving, which he did in the end. It didn't look good for Spurs, you know, Postacoglu or no Postacoglu. So it was a bit of an unknown for Spurs fans. So, you know, it didn't seem possible that I'd be sitting here talking to you today where we're inside the top four. Um, so I think fans need to, to say wake up a little bit, but open their eyes, look, and and think that we're in a good position because still people being critical of Postecoglou. I can't quite understand it that he's come in, he's hit the ground running. We're talking about a completely new style of play implemented at Tottenham. I think we've seen lots of changes throughout the club. Um, it's you know apart from a couple of plays, he's pretty much created a starting eleven uh, with two windows. So I do think that's quite you know special. The summer. Of course, as as is every window, very important to add in that squad depth and with Europe next season because you know I can sit here and go. It's been a fantastic season, which it has been, but we've had you know the luxury, if you like, of no Europe, one game a week, be able to concentrate on that opponent and win the game. Where a lot more games next season. Again, our Spurs fans, we want to see a trophy. You know, we want to be treating the, the Carabao Cup and, and FA Cup seriously. Um, so we need the squad to do that. You know, Carabao, we've only fought Apostle Glue as the Carabao Cup second round against Fulham. We we disrespected the competition and the opponent by making seven changes, which saw us leave the cup. So that was frustrating, but I think there's clear signs of progress. You know, at this time of recording, we've equals our points tally for last season. We're still seven games remaining. That that for me is a significant uh, difference that, that shows you everything you need to know. So I think he's a breath of fresh air. Credit to the players for adopting the systems. Uh, we just need to give him patience and time. That's all that needed because there, there's definitely a project there that really is exciting. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, yeah, he's he's done really well for you. Um, you know, um, you've seen some good players. Well, I mean, you got Madison there playing well. You've got um, yeah, Brennan Johnson, Son's playing well. I mean, look, I'm going to talk to you about Madison. Um, and you know, you can give me your honest opinion on this on Sunday. Now, this altercation he had with Dean Yates. Now. Was that a sending off offence? Should VAR have got into, involved and sent him off? Or do you think it's one you got away with? Let's be very clear here. You know, Madison's reacted to where he shouldn't have reacted. And I, I think personally, he, he's lucky. We, we've seen players been sent off for similar. Um, so in terms of we're talking about consistency and what we've seen in this season, then he was probably lucky uh, to still be on the pitch. You know, Madison... It gives it gives it also usually can take that stick, but this is a very rare occasion, I think, where he reacted. Um, but overall, I you know, not just that, but overall, I, I think that they're, they're just yellow cards in terms of what we see, and also you saw, um, the likes of Ryan Yates, who you know is asking to check, asking the referee to check VAR. And I thought that that was a yellow card. So to be honest with you, both players are probably lucky uh, to still be on the pitch because, you know, Yates is asking for VAR to get involved, to look at the monitor. And Madison, you know, whether you like it or not, he's turned around and he's made contact with, with the opponent, which, you know, the, you just don't do. Um, so <laughs> he's probably lucky, Tony, to, to be totally honest with you. Uh, his form hasn't been great either. So, uh, yeah, I think he's a class player. He made a difference when he, when he came into the club, but since coming back from injury, hasn't been great. Uh, and maybe hence the frustration. He's, he's annoyed with his own performance. Ryan Yates really got to him uh, and he reacted, but he certainly should have done that. And he's got to be very careful in future games because that could have cost us the game at the time. Yeah, we, we weren't winning at the time. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I, yeah, sorry, I said Dean. I don't know why I said Dean Yates. I meant Ryan Yates. Ryan yeah, Yates. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apologies for I don't know where that one came from. But... Uh, <laughs> But yeah, he, you know, yeah, he, he was lucky not to. He lucky he got away with that one because really, if he was sent off, he wouldn't be playing in this game. Um, but uh, look, we've we've got to keep an eye on him as well. I mean, um, you know, um, in terms of our season this season, I mean, look, it's been a bit of a mixed season. We start we played in the Champions League. <clears throat> um, you know, we we started off with a draw with Milan and beat. PSG 4-1 impressively at St James's Park, which a lot of people didn't see coming. Um, and then we lost both games to Dortmund, home and away. Um, but I think the key game was away at PSG. We were 1-0 up. Yeah. And a, a dubious penalty was given, let's be honest. It was a dubious penalty mm. because it should never have been a penalty. Now, under UEFA guidelines, um, if the ball hits another part of the body, then hits the arm, it's not a penalty. Um, obviously, Mbappe and Co were remonstrating about it. VAR looked at it, sent the referee to the monitor. Now, up to that point, this referee had a brilliant game, I thought. And you could see why at the time, he'd been the referee in the World Cup final. He'd been the referee in the Champions League final, the Polish guy. Mm. And I thought, well, there's nobody he's given this, you know. It, it, you can see it clearly comes off liver and mental and onto his arm, chest and onto his arm. But he gives it because he's under pressure from them players standing behind him, the likes of Mbappe. Um, and then it comes out the day after that UEFA said that that penalty should never have been given and the VAR man got stood down for the game against Real Sociedad the next night. So, bit of frustration there. But, you know, destiny was still in our hands. We we could have beat Milan at home. We went 1-0 up. We had the dream start. We should have capitalised on that. And then we let them back in the game. And even at 1-1, didn't, don't lose it because we can still be in Europe. And we go out and lose it. And then we end up in having no European football. Which at the time, coming as a welcome break, I suppose, because we have had a lot of injuries this season. A hell of a lot of injuries. Too many. Yeah. And they're still going now, the injuries. It's been a horrendous season for injuries. And um, The club are doing an investigation at the end of the season. Um, obviously, they're going to look at the, the training effort. Is it training from Eddie House side? Is it the medical staff side? Is it a bit of both? You know, so the club will hold their own investigation and they'll come up with whatever it is. Um, so no doubt there'll be something done. But that's not happening until the end of the season anyway. Um, but the moment we're in eighth place, um, you know, thankfully Chelsea 
got held to a draw by Sheffield United away to Bramall Lane, <laughs> a place where we went and won 8-0 earlier in the season. Um, but yeah, look, against West Ham, we were 3-1 down. Um, we came back and won that game 4-3 and you think, wow, you know. Um, then we're held to Ever- held to a draw by Everton. Again, again, we should have won. Yes, Jordan Pickford made some great saves that night and kept Everton in the game. But then when Lewis Hall went off with an, <clears throat> what we think was a knock at the time, um, Paul Dummett came on and what does Dummett do? Give away a penalty. He thinks he's, he's in WWE. Does he not realise there is VAR? Um, Martin Dubravka has got control of that ball. He doesn't have to wrestle Ashley Young to the ground, but he does that. Far intervene, sends a ref to the Monta, and there was only one thing that's happening there, and he was going to give the penalty. Um, and then we go to Fulham, and we go and beat Fulham. You know, uh, again, not not the greatest game. Um, you know, Fulham were really full of attacking towards us. Um, they should have put the game, they should have put us away, really, to be honest with you. Especially Moon as he had a glorious chance to score. And I think he just re- he didn't realise he had more time than he thought. And he rushed his shot, which went straight into Dubravka. Um, but, you know, we got the goal. Bruno scored the winner. Um, Eddie Howe gave the team a rock in. Um, you know, at the water break, um, whether it was for the Ramadan break, plus the, you know, the um, injury to Martin Dubravka. Um, so, you know, and we seem to play a little bit better after that. Um, but we're sitting in eighth place. We're chasing West Ham. We've got some tough games coming up. Tottenham starting on, you know, Saturday. We've, got, we've still got to go to Old Trafford yet. Um, so, you know, there's still some tough games there. Um, so we'll have to see where we finish at the end of the season. I'll be happy with the Conference League place, if I'm honest, because that's a competition that, that anybody could win. Um, it's it's basically one of those, you know, Villa's doing well and West Ham won it last season. So, you know, why not have a go? Um, but yeah, all in all, it's not been the best season for us. It's, you know, but again, you know, people think, oh, because we've got the richest owners in the world that we should have, we shouldn't be skimping on money, but we have to. It's nothing to do with the owners. It's to do with the fact is, the club isn't generating enough money, and that is the problem. And, you know, as soon as we rip them Sports Direct signs down, Leicester City were the first team to shout, hang on a minute, let's have a vote. You can't have big money sponsors coming into the club. Now, if there was no if there was no fair market value for these sponsors coming in, yes, we could have a few sponsors coming in from Saudi Arabia, 60, 70 million a season. That would be... Boom, bust, bust our uh, revenue sky high, which would then mean we could go out and spend money. Um, and that's why that came out. That's why that came about. So we couldn't. Um, and we're still being hampered by it at the moment. Um, and we want to be a, we want to be up there with the big boys, you know, but we can't compete at that end of the table because we're just not generating enough money at the moment. But that time will come and, uh, you know, we will be up at that end of the table. But I mean, Harry, this PSR, FFP stuff, right? You've got clubs getting deducted points for it, like Everton. They've lost six points this season now. They had a lot, mm. you know. Um, Forest have lost four points. The thing is, the said FFP and PSR, you know, was supposed to be to help clubs out so they didn't have owners overspending and putting the clubs in administration. Now, to me... I think this is causing more harm than good to any club because basically clubs that are coming up from the championship, so you've got the likes of Luton Town and that that have come up last season. They're probably thinking, oh, we'll have to make sure we don't spend too much here because we may get hit with a points deduction, may get hit with this, that and to that. So they're probably careful about what they can spend. But if you're wanting these teams from the championship to come up and bridge the gap and have a go in competing in the Premier League, They've got to have a way of being able to spend money. And, you know, technically what you're doing is you're just seeing these clubs come up and have a season up here and then off you go back down, you know. Mm. Um, I think this is far worse than what administration is, if I'm honest. I think Tony is an absolute mess at the moment, what we've seen from this season, you know, from points deductions to you have it back, you have some of it back. It's it's bonkers. And then 
part of me thinks I look at Manchester City and Chelsea and think, Where, where's those points deduction? Why is it Everton and Forest first? You know, we, it's, it's clear as day to see the money that, that City, Chelsea have spent. It have been in trouble before Chelsea, for example. So that's beyond me for a start. But I don't, I don't like FFP, if I'm honest with you. It favours... And it always will do the bigger teams rather than the smaller teams. And this is someone sitting here who supports the club that massively, probably out of anyone, benefits from FFP with the new stadium, with the income it has, you know, the, the crazy stuff. You know, the statistics are there. We could spend 550 million this summer and not even have to worry about FFP. So Tottenham really benefit from it. But I've been I've been very clear. I, I, I don't think that it's sustainable. It's the right thing to do. Because as you said, Luton Town's a perfect example. Yeah, we all want. Yeah, we should be given a chance at least of survival in the Premier League. But my my question to the Premier League is: where, Why should they have to worry about what they're spending? Manchester City shouldn't. That, that for me is bonkers. And you know, we're seeing a huge gap. Like, look at this year: the top three in the Premier League. There's a huge gap compared to your Sheffield United and Burnley. It, we, we're talking what seven, eight. You like you said with, with Sheffield United, they're eight nil. Uh, and, and you're not even, even right at the very top, for example. That is a huge gap that we're seeing. And, and nobody wants to to see that. We want a really competitive league, which we have seen throughout the season. But we haven't seen Sheffield United and Burnley have many competitive games. And, and that, that is, there's no secret to why they're struck with FFP. They can't spend uh, Luton, you know, that they would have invested. Their owners would have invested in in you know, doing like a Crystal Palace or Bournemouth uh, before, obviously, originally they went down under Eddie Howe in terms of sustainably in the Premier League season after season or Burnley under Sean Dyche who are consistently in the Premier League for, what, nine, ten years. That's what they would have wanted to do, but they can't because of FFP. So Premier League needs to have a long look at, at what they're doing and, and, and figure out, <laughs> just figure out a solution for me because, you know, with Newcastle, yeah, it, 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 I, originally I was worried in terms of I think you, you come in and, and you'd instantly win titles as a Spurs point of view. But if I put that to a side, why, why shouldn't that not happen? <laughs> you have owners with money. The whole point is they spend the money and implement success yeah. at the clubs. Why can't Newcastle do it? If City have done it with their owners, Chelsea done it with Roma Abramovich. They're laughing right now with, you know, 10, 12 trophies and Newcastle aren't allowed to do it. So it feels like a bit almost like an agenda, to be honest with you. The sponsors thing, like from Saudi, I, I don't see the problem with it. I, I don't, I honestly don't see where, where that's from. Um, but the problem you've got Tony as well, you've got other clubs that you mentioned Leicester there as well. They're, they're so worried about making sure the opponent doesn't get advantage. The Premier League have created this thing where, and it's going to cause problems, the vision between fans and clubs. So for me, FFP needs scrapping. You know, if you're going to be that fussy about it, maybe set a limit on what you can spend. There needs to be something, an advantage to smaller teams because, you know, in the end, it's going to be really boring to the point where you know who's going to be in the Premier League next season. You know, when it's someone's going to come up, it's impossible to stay up. We want to see teams come up and, and really fight um, to stay up. Yeah, Luton Town, you can say you're doing that. But if it w- wasn't for the points deduction, you said, what, Everton 6, 8 point deduction and uh, I think it is now Forest with the four point deduction. That doesn't happen, then Luton Town are, are down. So, is they've been struck by that. But for me, you know, a lot of reviewing needs to be done this summer because it, I, I just don't think it's fair. It's really not fair. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the thing is, they need to raise the bar from the 105 million over three years because, look, inflation, yeah. you know, line with inflation, things like that, you know, I think it should be at least 200 million over three years now. Um, it needs to be looked at in the long term. Um but I can see clubs taking the Premier League to court over this. You know, I could see the likes of Everton and Forest saying to the Premier League, right, we're taking you to court. This is unfair. Forest, yes, they had to spend a lot last season because, um, they, you know, they, ha- they had a lot of players that were contract, players that were on loan, so they left the club. And they had to buy new squad, basically, so they had to spend money. And, you know, and obviously... Spurs were buying Brennan Johnson, and if yeah. Spurs had paid for him three minutes, three weeks earlier, Forrest wouldn't have been charged with anything. That's yeah. that, that's the ironic thing. It's but only because of that. The three issue week is gap. Tony it's... is they've gone down this points deduction route, and if they're going to go that far, like originally, you know, they tried to to issue a ten point deduction for Everton. If we're going that that, what do you think that the Chelsea and City's punishment looks like? You know, they're going to be in the Premier League if, if we're talking about real punishments. Because yeah, the evidence is there with City. But even with Chelsea, they've been caught before 
and that they paid it off. They got they got you know like they couldn't spend for two transfer windows, but I think it went down to one because they, they paid some money, etc. But I think clubs Forest maybe not so much in terms of you know they spent a lot of money, but as you said, their player contracts coming up. And what the Premier League have got to think, Tony, is. Clubs like Forest and Everton, we we should want in our league. Forest, you know, big club, the history with, with Brian Clough, uh, excellent bunch of fans. Everton, you know, the people's clubs and, you know, really, really big club historically with trophies. In terms of Premier League outlook and the money that those clubs will generate, you want them in the league, they, but they don't, they're not looking at it like that. And for me, you know, you shouldn't even be thinking about Everton and Forest until you dealt with the big clubs. You have the superior advantage of the money anyway. So, for me, it feels like the Premier League have got an agenda. So they've got they've got a lot of convincing. They've got to get people back on side for a start. Uh, because, you know, mm-hmm. things like Super League, that starts again and regenerating new ideas and people come up with other ideas, maybe away from the Super League, because people are fed up with the way that the Premier League are handling situations. We all love the Premier League. We all love watching it. In terms of the way they're handling it with clubs at like Everton, Nottingham Forest, it, it, it puts you off as an outsider. So that they, they've got to do better and... They've gone very quiet about the situation. But but Everton, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, maybe they weren't honest to start with. But in terms of the spend is over with a new stadium, there should be a little bit of leeway. I, you know, if you broke the rules, you pay, you take a punishment. I get that. Uh, and a fine still would have hurt Everton, but not quite as much as, as points deduction. Because I think personally, they'd just about be OK. But if they went down, that, that you case like Everton, you can't see them coming back. With the debt of the new stadium, you know, player wages to pay off, they're, they're stuck and they're in that rot. In terms of can't get back to the Premier League, we've seen with Birmingham City and clubs like that. So Premier League need to need to do more. Yeah, yeah, I, to- I totally agree, Harry. It's just it's just beyond the joke. Um, oh, listen, you know, <clears throat> you see how much Chelsea have spent on their players, and look where they are now. They're still mid table. You know, they can't even beat Sheffield <laughs> United with a team like that. What they've got, um, because the problem is they've bought too many individuals and not and not enough t- players to play as a team. Um, you know they've got like the the best best young player in the world, obviously at the World Cup, which was Enzo Fernandez, and <laughs> but he, he looks lost in that team because the team doesn't play together as a full team. You know, um, but you know that's up to them if they want to go out and spend stupid money on players. Um, you know, go back to Brighton and buy Casido for one hundred and fifteen million, who I don't think's worth that much, by the way. Um, not what I've seen of him. <clears throat> And uh, definitely when we played Chelsea in that Carabao Cup, we should have been sent off within the first two minutes of the game because that tackle on Anthony Gordon was absolutely horrendous. Um, But yeah, you know, like you say, clubs haven't got a chance and that's the problem, you know. Um, So... We'll we'll see what we'll see what happens because I've had that meeting today. So we'll see what happens in the summer or something will be announced anyway in the future. Um, but ahead of Saturday's match, the match officials have been announced as well. So the referee for the match is Tim Robinson. We've seen him before at St James's Park. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, he, he's not a bad official. Official is Tim Robinson. I've got no problems with him. Uh, he's assisted by Gary Pesic and Adam Nunn. The fourth official is Oliver Langford. Um, VAR is Stuart Atwell. Not a great one for VAR. And his assistant is um, the female Sean Massey Ellis. So that's the lineup of officials. So Tim Robinson is the man in the middle on Saturday. It's a half 12 kickoff. We don't normally do well in a half 12 kickoff, but we did the last one because we went and beat West Ham after being 3 1 down to 4 3 up. So. Um, we we did okay with that. Um, Tim Robinson, referee. Do you know much about him? No, not really. To be fair, if we talk about officials, you know, generally uh, hard to keep, find. Find it hard to give you an official that has really stood out to be good this year. Uh, that we've seen inconsistency in every level. Uh, I couldn't tell you the handball rule. Uh, but again, the issue is, John, I'm going to maybe contradict myself slightly, but the Premier League needs to change a lot with the summer in terms of the rules, what we're seeing. I think the handball mm. run, handball rule is one and really make it clear to referees mm. what it's about. But their problem, actually, is they change too much every year and then we don't understand it. Like, we, nobody understood it at the start of the season. But then what I, I find baffling is you change it throughout the season. Like, you, you know, let's random example, Brighton to get a penalty there. But three weeks later, for the same thing, Everton don't because they've adapted the rule because yeah. they realise it's wrong. Then that's not fair, is it? 
or on Everton because they're not getting the penalty whereas as Brighton did. So they shouldn't adapt it throughout the season as well. And some clear explanation on the handball rule. Offside, you know, you kind of get your head around it now. It is what it is. But in terms of like blue cards, that's that's absolutely ridiculous and, con- and controlling the game. You need to get rid of that. And for me, you give more power to the on-field referee because like, you use that example. It's a perfect example, Newcastle and PSG. And anyone with common sense knows that that you know, it was the incorrect decision. It wasn't a penalty. And the referee, I'm not going to blame him because I think he was under pressure. Uh, and, and that's wrong. But we get rid of VAR. And give referees more control. They, they feel more confident in making the right decision. And they haven't got that pressure. You keep, by all means, like, keep the monitor there. But I don't think they need the VAR input. You can have your input from an assistant referee. And you can check the monitor at, you know, anytime you like. But you don't need someone in Stockley Park in your ear all the time. Because we know that, you know, if he doesn't like that Newcastle and PSG example, he doesn't give the penalty. He's going to be absolute uproar afterwards. He's going to struggle to get out of the PSG stadium. He's going to be all headlines next day. You know, official ignores the AR. There's, there's that instant pressure. So I feel that when the referee goes to the monitor, there's no decision at the moment. I think, yeah, the first place you go, Michael referees up. I think that's an excellent start. Release the audio and footage after every time. Maybe even hear it live. I don't know. But if you'll you're go in, like you're in, inside the stadium, you don't know what's going on. So a clearer picture for fans would be great. So they, they've got a lot that they need to work on and, and make things clear. So don't know much about the individual referee, but you know, let's hope that we see consistency. I'd like what I like with all referees. I like to see the game flow. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to be stopping it. You know, when a potential advantage could be played. You know, you give the yellow card later. Just, just keep playing as much as possible. That's what both teams would want. Anshwasa Kogler and Eddie Howe keep playing. You know, keep exploiting the opponent. And we should have a cracking game. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, things like the making up of refs. I mean, look, I, I said after watching that Women's World Cup last year, I thought that was brilliant when absolutely the referee, after I beat the monitor, gave the decision and she went, right, okay, it's a penalty or it's a red card, you know? And you heard it over the tannoy, which was brilliant. Now, that's what I want to see brought in the Premier League. I think that would be fantastic because... At least then, when he comes away from the monitor, he can he can do his saying and then go. It's a penalty, or it's not a yellow card. It's been rescinded. It's now upgraded to a red. You know things like that. In I would love to see that more. Um, but you know, let's hope. Let's hope we do. Where uh, let's hope we do see that at some point. But whether we do or not, um, who knows? But we'll just um, we'll just have to wait and see on that one. But. Um, Tim Robinson this season's had 25 games and uh, has shown 100, 101 yellow cards. Um, that's an average of four per game, but no red cards. He's not given one single red card out. So he seems wow. to be quite a lenient referee. Um, I mean, we had a referee when we played um, Fulham, and that was the young lad, Sam Barrett, who was only 30. He was, I thought he was terrific that day for us. Uh, yes, okay, he should have probably pulled out the red against Jimenez, but he didn't give him a yellow, but then he was sent the monitor by VR, and then he realised, hang on, oh yeah, that is right, it is a red card, then went back and sent them off, so look. Um, but I thought he had a terrific game, and we've only had him there once, Sam Barrett, but uh, but yeah, um, Tim Robinson, I think, yeah, he's all right as a referee. Um, you know, uh, last week we played Fulham, we, we got that... Um, the first goal was ruled out from Fabian Scher because Burn apparently fouled Bassey. Um, I call him Shirley Bassey because he went down. Um, but yeah, he, he, you know, he fouled Bassey and Jared Gillett, who we don't like as a referee, and he, I don't think he likes Newcastle, if I'm honest, um, decided to tell Sam Allison to go to the monitor and check this. And Sam Allison said, yeah, it's a foul and give the free kick to Fulham. But thankfully, two minutes later, Bruno popped up and scored the winner. So justice was done. Um, it's I think it's a stupid um, offside rule from IFAB as well, which makes it worse. And um, we saw that one against Wolves choked off. Yeah, that that's was ridiculous. ridiculous. So, you Goalkeeper's know, not going to get um, to it, Tony. That's the thing. You know, and he's yeah. looking from a side angle. He's not really blocking the view. He's not, he's not instructing the goalkeeper in any, any single way, but because of the rules, they can't give it. So it's, it's bonkers. No wonder Gary O'Neill was a knight. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's that, this is a thing they don't realise. They're going to cost people their jobs, you know. I mean, I'm not saying it's going to cost Gary O'Neill his job because he's done a fantastic job for Wolves, but 
you know, a, a manager who's trying to keep his team up from relegation. It, that could be a game that they need to steal up. And they get that point, that point they need to steal up. And yeah. they turn around and go, oh, well, that's no goal. So you, you don't get that now. And then they go down because of that one decision. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, in terms of players you've brought in the season, I mean, for Corio, the keeper, I mean, how impressed are you with him? Yeah, he's been excellent. He's been one, for me, the players of the season. He's come in and hit the ground running, ultimately, you know, and, and has become a fan favourite at the time where the majority of the fan base, myself included, wanted David Rare. It felt like at the time the club were going for a cheaper option, but that, you know, proved to be incorrect later on and it, you know, turned out to be that he's better for the system. Uh, he's really, really good for his feet, really confident, great shot stopper. You know, needs to improve his catching, yes, but there's in, in, in you know, signs of improvement from that. He's getting better protection from corners, which was an issue at some point, uh, which Man City originally exploited, I think, in the FA Cup. It kicked on in the league as well. But no, he's been really good. One of the, For me, one of the goalkeepers of the season, I think, up there with, you know, your Allisons as expected. Um, so very, very impressed with, with Vicario. Uh, and he saved us so many points, ultimately. So... In terms of like his season, nine out of ten so far. Really, really impressed with him. He isn't getting the credit he deserves because so many other players have stepped up as well. Yeah. Um, so who who's what who's like your standout players this season? Who's the ones to watch on Saturday? It's difficult, isn't it? Because you know, stand out like the start of the season would have been you know, James Madison's your sons, but neither of them for me. Madison's is coming back from injury and some in 2024, to be honest with you, have ever hit the ground running at all. In terms of who can cause Newcastle problems, I look at Dan Byrne at left-back versus the pacey Brennan Johnson. And I think, you know, if you're Andrew Poster Cockley, you have to keep Brennan Johnson on that pitch for as long as possible. Um, so I think Brennan Johnson can cause you real problems. I think Timo Werner on the left, his pace, his agility, you know, his crosses. We've seen uh, Spurs force five own goals from the opposition in the league, the most out of any other team. And that four out of five, I think, have been since Timo Werner been at the club from January with these amazing crossings. So you make it hard for people like Dan Byrne who haven't got the pace on the stretch. Um, so players like Werner and Johnson, I think, will cause you the real problem. I'm really interested to see who win that new, you know, that battle in midfield with Guimarães, you know, gives Newcastle a huge chance of winning that. Obviously, I believe you don't have Joe Linton. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but obviously he's, he's massive in that yeah. midfield. I don't know what our midfield three will look like because two of them came off at half time against Forest. We saw Benzikor and Hoiberg come on for Basuma and Sar. So I don't quite know what the three will look like. That'd be really interesting. But I think we can cause you problems on the wings. Uh, but I think you probably have Song covered uh, in terms of, you know, he's not going to offer much physically, like a physical presence. He's, his movement will be good. His you know, touches will be good. But in terms of like when they get the crossing position, he's not going to cause you that many problems. I think Richardson's still out as well. So yeah, Johnston Havana for me, Tony. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, well, Dan Byrne won't be face well, Dan Byrne won't be playing at left back on some uh, Saturday because uh, Lewis Hall will be playing left back because obviously Sven Botman's out injured. We've got the cells out now for six to nine months mm. with an ACL. So it'll be the centre back partnership will be possibly share and burn. And then you'll have Hall on the left. Um, now, for right back, it's probably going to be Kraft, unless uh, Kieran Trippier's back fit. Um, I'm not sure how far Kieran Trippier is away, to be fair. Um, but if I was going to think the team that could play on Saturday, and this is the team I'm going to go with if Trippier's not fit, I'll go to Bravka in goal. Uh, the right back, Emil Kraft, then you have the centre back pairing of Cher and Byrne. Lewis Hall on the left. Midfield three will be Sean Longstaff, who we want out of the team. Um, but it'll be Sean Longstaff. It will be Bruno in the middle. And it will be um, Ellie Anderson on the left. And the front three is going to be Jacob Murphy, um, Isak in the middle, Gordon on the left. Unless he decides to change it and play Barnes on the left and Gordon on the right. But I don't think he will. So I think it, I think he'll start with Murphy on the right and Gordon on the left, um, and maybe bring Barnes on in the second half. But uh, that that's the lineup I think we'll go with. I mean, look, Isak's on fire this season. He's scoring for yeah. fun. Um, he didn't get one on Saturday, but he is scoring uh, last Saturday. But he is scoring for fun. 
um, also. Um, Anthony Gordon is having a terrific season. Even played well for England against Brazil. Um, so he's one for your defence to keep an eye on. Yeah. Um, he's already scored a worldie against Man City, as we saw, when he uh, took Kel Walker at the bits that game. <clears throat> um, but yeah, the, the, there's players there to watch. Obviously, Bruno, um, you know, share from the share at right back. He plays, uh, sorry, the centre back, sorry, right centre back. Um, but yeah, he, he can ping a ball around the park and also get in the shooting position as he scored before against you, hasn't mm. he? And, um, you know, you remember last season when you went five down in 21 minutes. Um, you'll never forget that. Um, no. You know, and <clears throat> that's when Murphy scored his screamer as well and Isak got two and um, Callum Wilson got his customary goal. But he won't be playing this week because he's out injured as well to the yeah. end of the season. Um, but yeah, look, there's there's plenty there. It's going to be a good game. It's going to be a hard game for both teams, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, we shall see what the what battle commences on Saturday. Um, it's certainly going to be an interesting game, and it depends how obviously Eddie Howe decides to use his subs. Um, I mean, look, if you look at our players, um, you know, Botman and Lascelles both got ACLs and they're out for six to nine months now. Botman. Apparently had this issue back in September, but decided he wanted to play on. Um, should the club have maybe said to him, look, you need surgery, just go and get surgery now and then come back? Or do you think Botman was right to play on? I mean, I know you can't force a, a player to have surgery, um, but what's your thoughts on that as an outsider looking in? If I'm outside of looking in, of course it's easy to comment after it's happened, but the club need to take the action that is best for the player and the action which would have been best for the player at the time and, and even looking back on it now would have been to take the surgery and he would be back you know, for this game, for big games like this. Uh, it was always going to be a huge risk. And I think overall the risk w- isn't worth taking with, with any player. Uh, such significance of Botman at the back for Newcastle because you know, Newcastle, that front three, there's a lot of pressure on them on Saturday because you know pretty much, unless the Bradka has a worldy, the Spurs are going to score goals. We do in pretty much every single match we play in, uh, bar I think, think one game that we didn't score recently. Um, and Newcastle, that defence, it isn't the strongest in terms of personnel with injury. It's a really injury hit defence, that back five, including the goalkeeper. Um, so, you yeah, know, bot one makes a difference. Very, very strong, very you know, physical uh, defender, so yeah, absolutely. As a nice outsider looking in, it's easy to say, but it doesn't look good on Newcastle's part. Um, you know, but we've had similar incidents with Son where they played on for an injury with Charleston and they got injured later. So I don't think it's like Newcastle problem, if you know what I mean. But clubs yeah. need to be stronger and take the interest and welfare of the player because, like Botman, how long do you say he was out for? Remind me, six to eight months. So you're not back at least January next year now. So it affects already a huge chunk of next season. So Newcastle already got it all to do, if you like. They've got to go out there and sign a centre-back in line with FFP as well. So, you know, like, as I'm sure you like to be optimistic as a Newcastle fan with any fan going into a new season. But ultimately, for me, you've got your best defender out and, until January. So, you know, that, that's not the start you want. So, you know, easy to say now, but it doesn't look good. Yeah. Well, that's two centre-backs out, really, because... The Cells is out for six to nine months, yeah. so he'll be out of January next year as well. Um, even though he's not first choice centre back, but um, I mean, in terms of the game on Saturday, I know because you've got to go soon as well. Um, so what's your score predictions for uh, for Saturday, and who's going to? You're going to like this. You're going to like this. I'm going to go with a five goal thriller, and don't worry, I don't think we're losing five deal this time. We'll go with three two Newcastle. Uh, I think it'd be another one where you know we take the lead early. I think we could go 2-0 up to what we want to do, but I think you will come back again. You know, the crowd will play a massive part. I think Harvey Barnes coming off the bench will be massive again. Uh, he does worry me as Poro ties. He's played a lot of games recently and he's been really good, but I do think that his weaknesses, if you like, will be exploited. Um, if I was Eddie Howe, I'll, I'll, I'll change it. For me, that front three will be Isaac, who's obviously had an excellent season, as you said, Gordon as well. Uh, but he has to have Harvey Barnes in there. You know, as a Spurs point of view, he'd worry me. I'm not that worried about Jacob Murphy. I know he scored a fantastic goal against us last season, but I don't look at him and think he can cause a doggy much problems. Maybe off the bench, but not yeah. starting. 
Uh, but I'm going to go with three to Newcastle. I think that you'll you win this, and it has to be top seven. You know, I think for Newcastle had a lot of injuries. Absolutely, I don't think it'd be a disaster if you don't. But you don't want to go from Champions League football to no Europe. That's always very very frustrating. Uh, and obviously, it doesn't make it easy for Eddie Howe. You know, the, the, the ball go to him. Eddie, we've gone from from Champions League to nothing. Well, at least you can go Champions League. We're still in Europe, and we cope with the injuries. So seventh has got to be the aim for clubs like Newcastle, Chelsea, West Ham as as the bare minimum, uh, if you like. So it'll be interesting to see who gets in and how it pans out. There's always that interesting battle, you know, the upper mid table, if you like. So I'm interested to see how it will pan out. But in terms of this game, three to Newcastle, Harvey Barnes brace. Uh, and a frustrated Tottenham fan in Harry as we throw away another lead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, um, I've got a couple of score predictions. I mean, look, my heart says we'll win 3-1, but my head says it'll be a one-all draw. Um, okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with a one-all draw. Um, I'll take that now. I'll take a point all okay. day, actually. Um, I'll take if a we point. get the win, even better. You know, if we get the win, even better. But uh, I'll take a point now. Um, the point's always a positive, as I always say. It's only when it, it's it's only a negative when you get beaten. Um, but yeah, look, I'll take a point now, absolutely, um, without a shadow yeah. of a doubt. Um, it's been great having you on the channel again, Harry. Even though we couldn't go live because YouTube's having a problem <laughs> at the moment, and uh, we don't know how long this outage is going to be going on for. But um, do you want to give people a shout out where they can find you on your channel, Harry? Absolutely, yeah. Firstly, Tony, thank you very much for having me on again. It's the pleasure, and you know, apologies to chat yeah. and that as well, but listeners. Uh, for the YouTube issues, uh, it's an issue that everyone's suffering with at the moment. So, good old YouTube and StreamYard, if you like, uh, between them. <laughs> uh, but thank you very much for having me. You can follow me, Harry Scarf uh, Twenty Two, on all socials. Your TikToks, your Instagrams, your your Twitters or X's is now called. Cool, but I have my own channel. Uh, Scarfy Spurs, so we see you know, pretty much daily Spurs, England and Premier League content. We have a Premier League show every Wednesday night. Match previews, uh, match reactions, match day vlogs. Uh, this is all Spurs as well. Um, so there's a lot of stuff on there. Yeah, weekly podcasts uh, every Monday, 7.45pm. Yeah, Monday, we've got um, Spurs panel, very good panel, but also Newcastle fan and content creator Adam Pearson has, has been very kind to give me his time Monday evening here beyond. Uh, as a Newcastle point of view, so any Newcastle fans, go check that out. Uh, and obviously, I used to write for Newcastle last year. Tony, you'll probably remember for Valve. Um, so I had a few articles yes. uh, done for them on Newcastle. So that was really interesting. Obviously, met, met and spoke to a lot of Newcastle fans. Obviously, a really good time for the club, you know, in that trying to get Champions League football. Obviously, the, around that win they got against us as well. So it was a very good season for you last season. Uh, now, long, no longer at well, Valve, but I still get the opportunity to write about Newcastle every now and then. So, but Tony, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, no problem at all, Harry. No problem. Um, so, yeah. Um, Coming up on, on the channel this week, well, obviously, um, hopefully, YouTube will be fixed. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, um, barring that, um, I think tomorrow I'm on with John Sinclair. We're doing the preview tomorrow night, I think, as far as I can remember, if that's still the case. Oh, um, I'm, doing a, I'm doing a preview show with John Sinclair, so we might be on it together. <laughs> oh, we might be on it together, yeah, absolutely. Um and then Friday, I'll probably do Eddie's press conference reaction. And then on Saturday, there'll be the pre-match as well. That'll be at 11 a.m. again, like it was against uh, when we played West Ham as well. But um, before we do go, if you have liked what you see, don't forget to smash that thumbs up. It does help the channel. So follow Sean the Sheep and smash those likes. Thank you. It does help the channel. It means new viewers find it easily. If you're brand new to the channel, come and hit that subscribe. Come be part of this great community we got here. Also, hitting that bell notification tells you when I'm live, have a pre record for any upcoming shows as well. You know, I generally like doing the live shows. Um, if you want to become a member as well, by the way, it is 99p. You can do that by clicking the join button. And if you want to make a donation, do that in chat, click the dollar sign, use the super chat, all money reinvested back in the channel. So, thank you very much for your support as well. Um, yeah, I'd you know, we don't like to do these pre-records. We do rather be live because it's great when you can interact with the chat. Yeah, absolutely. Beyond our control tonight, unfortunately, um, YouTube is just totally... and Between YouTube and StreamYard, they've totally messed up tonight. And uh, 
I'm not the only one, by the way. There's plenty of other channels out there. Every other channel can't go live tonight. So yeah. hopefully they get this they get this sorted and uh, we'll all be um back on the channel very, very soon. But uh but yeah, just remember the future's bright. The future is definitely black and white. It's bye bye from me. And bye bye from me. <laughs> How are we the lads? Oh!